I'm Grace Looker with BASF and here today I'm in a field here in Central Ohio in Morrow County and this field was planted a few weeks ago. We can see that the soybeans are just starting to put on that first trifoliate. Uh, so they are coming along really well. However, as I've been driving around the state and according to USDA reports, there are still quite a few soybean fields left to be planted in Ohio. So as we are now getting into June, we need to start taking some extra considerations into account as we think about planting soybeans in June. So some of the things that we need to consider as we are going into these later planted soybeans are soybeans relative maturity. So as we get into June, it's extremely important that soybeans can build up as much vegetative growth as they can before they start those reproductive growth stages. The reason being the more time that soybean has to build up vegetative growth, the more nodes it's going to put on. The more nodes that we have, the more opportunities we have for pods on those nodes. And obviously the more pods we have, the higher our yield potential is going to be. So I would recommend making sure we have a nice full season relative maturity bean, especially in these June planted fields. Make sure we get one that's gonna be nice, long season, build up that time for vegetative growth. I'd recommend planting as long of a relative maturity as you can before that first killing frost. So in addition to selecting a soybeans relative maturity, another thing we need to take into account with June planted soybeans is making sure that we are upping our planting populations. So when we plant in May, generally a final harvested plant stand of 120 to 100,000 is going to suffice. However, as we get into June, we really need to make sure that final harvested stand is closer to between 130 and 150,000 plants per acre. And so we need to make sure that we are upping our population now. I would recommend for June planted soybeans to up your population by about 15 to 25 percent to increase the number of plants that we have for our harvested stands. June planted soybeans require higher number of soybeans out there in that final plant stand in order to reach that maximum yield potential. And then lastly, one other consideration I have for you, although this one is a little less feasible, is if we do have the opportunity to plant in narrower rows, I would recommend that for June planted soybeans. So when we start to get into June, that's giving us less time to be able to allow those soybeans to grow. And so if we do have the ability to plant in 20 inch or narrower rows, I would recommend that because it's going to allow our soybeans to close the plant canopy more quickly. However, I fully understand may not be feasible depending on equipment that we have. So now that we have gone over some considerations for June planted soybeans, I do want to take a quick minute just to hit on some of the things that we are starting to see for our soybeans that are already growing from those fields that did get planted in late April and in May. And one of the concerns that I've been getting calls about is with slugs. So slugs typically tend to hatch in late April, early May, and then it takes about one to two weeks for them to reach a juvenile stage where they can start feeding on that plant. And so we are starting to get some calls and reports of slugs coming into the area. Slugs are much more common in no-till fields where we have heavy residue. They also really like cool, wet conditions. And that's primarily where I am receiving these calls from. And so if you wanna know if you have slugs, one of the best ways to find the actual slug is to go out at dusk, right before nightfall. We can usually see them actively out there and feeding. However, we can also go out during the day and look for some of the damage that they leave behind. You'll be able to see where they are feeding on the cotyledons or feeding on those unifoliate leaves. So when it comes to managing for slugs, that can be a little bit tricky. And what we really need to look at is what growth stage these soybeans are in because that can help us determine if we do need to go with a management practice or not. So if the soybeans are in a growth stage like this one here, where it's got these true leaves, it's just starting to put on that first trifoliate, then actually at this stage, it's much more cosmetic than yield inhibiting because those slugs will be feeding on these leaves instead of the growing point, which is actually good news for us because that can let the soybeans stay alive. 
Soybeans can tolerate quite a bit of defoliation before we start to see it really impact their yield. At the V2 growth stage, which would be two true trifoliates, soybeans can tolerate about 75% defoliation and from that we would see about a 5% yield loss. So you are seeing a little bit there, but typically again, it is more cosmetic than what it would be yield inhibiting. However, if your soybeans are younger and they just have the cotyledon and that growing point exposed and there's no true leaves for the slugs to feed on, then they will feed on those cotyledons and that growing point, in which case we could result in plant death, which would reduce our stands. And then we could see more of an impact for yield in that perspective. When it comes to managing slugs, managing slugs is very tricky because since slugs are not a true insect, generally pesticides are ineffective on slugs and the slugs are able to just slime off that toxin. So it really doesn't do them any good. There are some different baits that are available for slugs. However, they are not commonly used. And so I would say most of the time we are seeing more of a cosmetic effect than a true yield effect. And with that, I would like to thank you very much for your time.